You're on mine, right? Welcome, everybody. Hi everyone, welcome to today's live lesson. I'll be getting started in just a couple of minutes. I wanted to tell you what we will be working on today. Today we're going to do a first grade animal project. This is the project for the gifted and talented students in first grade. But if you're not in first grade, it's okay. You can still watch and learn lots of things today about animals. We're gonna be answering this question what are some behaviors of living things? And we will be answering that question with a live animal and we will see what behaviors it has. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to start with a story. And this is story is called The Mixed Up Chameleon by Eric Carl. While I'm reading the story, I want you to think about how you can answer this question. What are some behaviors of living things? So a, a little bit about this story. This chameleon is mixed up. He's confused. He wants to have or be able to do what other animals can do. He wants to have their behaviors. And so we're going to read that and learn about this chameleon. Also, today I have a science sidekick with me. And at the end of today's lesson, you will be able to see my sidekick and see who it is, all right? So pay attention and stay tuned until the end so that you can find out who's my science sidekick. All right, let's start with The Mixed Up Chameleon by Eric Carle. On a shiny green leaf sat a small green chameleon. It moved onto a brown tree and turned brownish. Then it rested on a red flower and turned reddish. When the chameleon moved slowly across the yellow sand, it turned yellowish. You could hardly see it. When the chameleon was warm and had something to eat, it turned sparkling green. But when it was cold and hungry, it turned gray and dull. When the chameleon was hungry, it sat still and waited. Only its eyes moved up, down, sideways until it spotted a fly. Then the chameleon's long and sticky tongue shot out and caught the fly. That was its life. It was not very exciting. But one day, the chameleon saw a zoo. It had never seen so many beautiful animals. All right, look at the picture. Look at how many different animals we can see. Let me see my science sidekick. Can you tell me what animals you see in this picture? Ooh, I see a turtle. <laughs> An elephant. A giraffe. A fox. A... I see a flamingo. Good job, science sidekick. Lots of animals. So the chameleon saw these animals. Let's see what he thought. The chameleon thought, how small am I? How slow, how weak. I wish I could be big and white like a polar bear. And the chameleon's wish came true. But was it happy? No. I wish I could be handsome like a flamingo. Look at what's happening to our chameleon. I wish I could be smart like a fox. I wish I could swim like a fish. I wish I could run like a deer. Chameleons do that with their eyes. I wish I could see things far away like a giraffe. Oh my goodness, what's happening to our chameleon? 
These are the animals he's, these are the animals he's turning into. I wish I could hide in a shell like a turtle. I wish I could be strong like an elephant. I wish I could be funny like a seal. I wish I could be like people. Just then, a fly flew by. The chameleon was very hungry, but the chameleon was very mixed up. It was a little of this and a little of that, and it couldn't catch the fly. Oh my goodness. He won't be able to eat if he can't catch the fly. I wish I could be myself. The chameleon's wish came true, and it caught the fly. The end. So after all of that, the chameleon wanted to be himself. So did you notice some of the behaviors, animal behaviors that the other animals did that the chameleon wanted? So when he wanted to be a, let's see, let's see which animal. So when he wanted to be a fish, he wanted to be able to swim. Swim is a behavior. It's something that animals do. Certain animals can swim. Or run. He wanted to run like a deer. That is another animal behavior. Animals can run. See things from far away like a giraffe. So anything that an animal does is a behavior. A turtle hides in a shell. So these are all examples of animal behavior. Some other ones are, these are all examples. Flying, walking, crawling, swimming, climbing, eating, jumping, running, hiding, sleeping, standing still, playing, and bathing. All of these are examples of behaviors of living things. And that's what we're gonna learn about today with our science experiment. Is everybody ready? We are going to learn what is the behavior of, are you ready? I'm gonna show you. Ooh, what do you think, science sidekick? That's ugly. <laughs> this is called a mealworm. And my students who are in my first grade class were able to meet our mealworms right before we left for spring break. And today we are going to see what the mealworm does. What are his behaviors? Okay, so let me show you our mealworms. I have them in this little case. And they're all in here digging around. You can see them moving. All right, so we're going to compare today. So we're gonna see what the mealworm does and what the rock does. So let's think about that. Um, is the rock a living thing or a non-living thing? Science sidekick, what do you think? The mm. rock. Ooh. Hmm. Non-living. Non-living, very good. How do we know that it's non-living? How do we know? It doesn't move. Okay, it doesn't move. Does it grow? Does it eat? Does it breathe air? No. Very good. All right, now let's look at our mealworm. Let's see, I wanna pick one that's wide awake. Are you wide awake, sir? Ooh, yeah, you're wide awake. Okay, I'm gonna put you right here. There's our mealworm. Now, how do we know that our mealworm is living? It's moving. It's moving, very good. It's alive, it eats, it grows, and it changes. And later today, I'm gonna to show you how our mealworm is changing. All right, so let's observe. I have a chart called mealworm behaviors. We're going to compare the rock and the mealworm. We're gonna do different things. We're going to give it different stimulus. A stimulus is an action or something that causes an action, okay? So we're gonna give each, the rock and the mealworm, a different stimulus, and we're gonna see what happens, okay? The first thing we're going to, our first stimulus is a stick, okay? So let's start with our rock, okay? I'm gonna give the rock, the stick to the rock and let's see what he does. Anything? 
Is he doing anything? Mm, okay, so let's write down what our rock did. Rock did did nothing. Poor rock. All right, let's look at our mealworm. All right, let's think. Do you think the mealworm is going to do anything? Let's see. Ooh. He's probably going, what's going on? Let's see what happens if I put him on the stick. Ooh. I want to see if he'll grab on. Oh, look. He's holding on. Good job. All right, so when I gave my mealworm the stick, I'm gonna put it moved. And held on. All right, so first stimulus, the stick, the rock, did nothing. Our mealworm moved and held on. All right, next is going to be a cotton swab with peppermint. This is the peppermint we used last week when we made our hand sanitizer. Do you guys remember? We used peppermint in our hand sanitizer to make it smell good. Okay, so I have a cotton swab with peppermint. Um, let's see, what do, you th what do you think is gonna happen? Let's make a prediction. Let me see my science sidekick. What do you think is going to happen when I give the cotton with peppermint to the rock? Ooh, nothing. Okay, you think nothing's gonna happen. What do you think is gonna happen when I give it to the mealworm? He's gonna jump. Okay, that's a good prediction. Well, let's see. Anything? Do you see anything happening? No. Okay, let's try the mealworm. We'll put it right here. Oh, did you see that? Hmm. Oh, what do you notice? What's he doing? He's looking for it. Do you think he's smelling it? Yes. Let's see if he goes towards it. Let's see. It looks like he's searching for something. Let me help him. Let me put it right here. I wonder if he likes the smell. Oh, it looks like he's, is it looks like he's trying to hide under the cotton ball? All right. It looks like, it looks like our mealworm smelled it looked like he was trying to smell and then he tried to hide under the cotton ball so i'm gonna write okay first our rock our rock did nothing, nothing. very good and our mealworm looks like it moved oh it crawled let me get another pin It moved, it crawled, and it tried to hide. Everything that I'm writing down is called my data. This is the information that I'm getting, and data comes from evidence. The evidence is how I know, how do I know these things? Well, my evidence is what I'm doing. I'm actually seeing what's happening 
That's my evidence. I don't make these things up. As scientists, we look at what is truly happening. Oh, I want you to go back and look at the mealworm. What's he doing? He likes it. Looks like he likes it. You know something about mealworms that I've noticed is that they like to hide because even when I have them in here, they like to dig. This is, oat it has oatmeal in here. That's something that they eat and they like to hide in there. So that's a behavior of a mealworm. They like to hide. All right, so we've seen our, our stick, our cotton swab. Ooh, the next one's gonna be interesting. We're going to see what happens when we put a flashlight on our rock and a flashlight on our mealworm. For this experiment, we're gonna have to move into a darker place. All right. Okay, mealworm, I'm gonna take this away. All right, here we go. To a dark place. I'm gonna get my flashlight. All right, so pay attention to what happens. It's gonna get dark. Ooh, I'm scared of the dark. It's okay, science sidekick. There we go. All right, let's start with the rock. Okay, what do you notice? Well, something I notice when I put light on it is it looks shiny, it sparkles a little bit. Okay, let's see what happens to the mealworm. Are you ready? Hmm. It looks like he doesn't like it. Oh. What do you think? Is he coming towards the light or away from the light? I think he likes it. How do you know? What do you think? Why do you think that? He's looking for it. Oh, he's looking for it. All right, so now we see what the mealworm does when it's introduced to light and what the rock does. Okay, so let's go back and write down our data. You ready, Science Sidekick? Okay, we're back. Let's write this down. Where's my pen? Here we go. Okay, so when the rock had the flashlight, it looked shiny and it sparkled. Okay, and when the mealworm got the flashlight, it moved towards it. It looked like it wanted to find the light. Okay, our next stimulus. Our next stimulus is going to be water. Okay, so we're gonna get a little drop of water. We're gonna put it on our rock, and then we're gonna put a little drop of water close to our mealworm. And let's see what happens. Ooh, this is exciting. Is everybody ready? Okay, first the rock. Okay, I noticed that the drop of water rolled off and the rock got wet. It got darker. It got darker, very good. All right, let's see what happens with the mealworm. Are you ready? Ooh, it stopped. Hmm, what do you think it's doing? It's drinking. Is it drinking? 
Seems like it. He stopped completely when he was moving. Wow, very good. All right, I'm gonna write that down. Okay, so when we put water on our rock, it got wet, it got darker. Okay, and then our mealworm, he's still there. Our mealworm stopped. and got very close to the water. So it looks like it was drinking. It's actually still there. He's still there with the water. Okay, so now let's take the water away. Sorry, mealworm. Sorry, Mr. Mealworm. You okay? <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna move the water. All right, our last stimulus is air, okay? So we're gonna see what happens to the rock and we're going to see what happens to the mealworm. So I'm pretty much just gonna blow some air on it, all right? Here we go for the rock. Did you see anything happen, science sidekick? No. Okay, let's see what happens to our mealworm. Are you ready? <laughs> Let me turn him this way. It looks like he just stood still. All right, so our mealworm stood still. Our rock did nothing. our mealworm stood still. All right, so I have gathered my data and I have my evidence because I was able to do, do something, create a stimulus to see what happened with the rock and the mealworm. It looks like our mealworm is standing up a little bit. Hi, buddy. Let's see what happens with this again. All right, do you wanna go home? Let's send our mealworm home. He did such a good job. Let's give him a round of applause. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> good job, mealworm. Okay, let's put him back in his house. Oh, something that I wanna show you. Uh, in a bit, we're gonna talk about how animals are divided into classes. Okay, all animals, most animals can be divided into six classes and a mealworm is considered an insect. And the reason he's an insect is because he has six legs that he uses for crawling, and he has an antenna, if you can see it. Ooh, he just jumped right off. Okay, so mealworms are insects, okay? Oh, and something that a lot of insects do is called metamorphosis. Oh, let's see, Mr. Science Sidekick, do you know what metamorphosis means? Hmm. No, you don't? Okay, well metamorphosis is when an animal changes to another animal. An example that a lot of us know is our caterpillar changes into a? Butterfly. Butterfly, very good. Well, does anyone know what a mealworm changes to? A mealworm, I'm gonna show you. A mealworm changes into an, another insect, okay? And let's see what insect it becomes. Is everyone ready? We're gonna watch it.
Okay, so we can see now that a mealworm metamorphosizes into a dark beetle. Mm. Guess what, everyone? So we've had these mealworms, my students in first grade, we had these mealworms before spring break. And during spring break, guess what happened? A couple of them have changed and are now pupa. They have changed from larva to pupa. So they are not moving, they're very still. And in a couple of weeks, they're going to get darker and darker and then they will hatch and we will have beetles. Now you may ask, what are we gonna do with these beetles? Well, we're gonna release them into the wild and let them live their lives <laughs> because they're animals. All right, so we're gonna look forward to this. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll be able to show you how our mealworms have changed and metamorphosized. And you know what? How do they know to do that? How does a mealworm know how to get into a pupa? How does a spider know how to make a spider web? Well, all of those behaviors are called, let's go here. Okay, these kind of behaviors are called instincts. Everyone say instincts. Instincts. Very good. Instincts are innate behaviors they do not have to be learned or practiced. They are also called instinctive behaviors. An instinct is the ability of an animal to perform a behavior the first time it is exposed to the proper stimulus. For example, a dog will drool the first time and every time it is exposed to food. All right, let's, think, let's go back and think about our mealworms and think about our data. What behaviors of the mealworm were instinct? What are some things that the mealworm did that he just knew how to do? Can anybody think? How about when we gave the, we put the drop of water in front of the mealworm? How did he know that he was going to drink it or that he needed to drink it? Well, because it's an instinct. It's something that he knows to do because it's, he's just born with that ability, that behavior. So here are some examples of other animal instincts. So I just talked about a spider making a web. No one teaches that spider how to make a web. It just knows how to do it. Or a bird building a nest. It's another instinct. Or a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. Those are all instincts that animals have. They just know how to do them. Okay, so all of these behaviors that we've talked about today that animals do are called instincts, innate behaviors. All right, let's do a quick review of what we learned today. We had a lot of fun looking at this mealworm and analyzing its behaviors. All right, so these are some of the words that we learned today. We talked about living. Our mealworm was living. And we talked about non-living, our rock was non-living. I forgot to say this word, but an organism is an animal, a live animal. And so our mealworm is an organism, okay? We learned about behavior is what an animal does. And then we were able to record data. Our data is our information that we get, data comes from evidence. How do we know this information? Because we did a science experiment and we saw it with our own eyes. And lastly, we learned the word instinct. An instinct is something that an animal knows how to do. They're born with it, okay? So what I want us to do today, this is what I want you to do, okay? I want you to write about what you learned Is there 
our six learn today. Today I learned about animal behaviors. So what I want you to do is on a piece of paper, I want you to write this sentence. Today I learned about animal behaviors. And then I want you to draw a picture about something that you learned today. And then you're going to write, I drew, tell me what you drew, because. Why did you draw it? All right, so think about, let's think about what are some things that you could draw about. Let me see, Mr. Science Sidekick. What are some things that you could maybe draw that you saw today? A mealworm. Oh, you can draw a mealworm. Very good. Now remember, if you draw a mealworm, a mealworm is an insect. So how many legs will you draw on this mealworm? Hmm. Hmm. Six. Very good. Six. Mealworms have six legs because they're insects. All right. So you could draw the mealworm. You could draw what happened with the mealworm, okay? You could draw the life cycle of the mealworm, maybe how it changes into a beetle. Those are all things that you can draw today. And after you draw and write, I want you to take a picture and send it to me because I wanna see what you're doing at home. Okay, before we end today, I want to review that all animals can be divided into six classes animal classes and we learned this song in first in my first grade class and this is how it goes animal classes animal classes there are six there are six mammals and birds amphibians and reptiles insects and fish insects and fish okay let's say it again ready animal classes animal classes there are six there are six mammals and birds, amphibians and reptiles, insects and fish, insects and fish. Very good. All right, so quick review. Mammals give birth to live young. They have hair or fur. Mammal mothers nurse their young with milk and they're warm blooded. Birds have feathers and wings and they lay eggs and they're also warm blooded. Amphibians live on land and in water. They're cold-blooded. That means that in order for them to get warm, they have to sit in the sun. They lay eggs. They have moist skin. That means their skin is very wet. And they have webbed feet. Reptiles have scales, not fur. They have dry skin. They usually lay eggs. Sometimes they have live young and they are cold-blooded. Fish breathe underwater using gills. They have scales and fins. They're cold-blooded and they lay eggs. And finally, we have insects, which we saw today. Insects have an antenna, six legs, a head, an abdomen, and a thorax, and sometimes they have wings. Our mealworm doesn't have wings, but when he becomes a beetle, he will have wings. Okay, animal behaviors. So we learned about all of the different things that animals can do. I'm going to read you one last poem and then you're gonna to get to meet who's my science sidekick. Are you excited? All right, this poem is called How by Lee Bennett Hopkins. How do spiders, ants, ladybugs, bees, Butterflies, fireflies, dragonflies, fleas know to crawl, creep, flit, flutter, fly as winter comes bitterly chilling the sky. All of these behaviors, how do animals know to do it? Well, they have instincts. They know how to do these things because they're born knowing how to do them. All right, thank you everyone for joining me today. Remember our question, what are some behaviors of living things? That is what you learned about today. You're going to write about it and draw about it. I'm going to put this information in my story so that you can go back if you wanna know how to spell these words. I'm gonna put them there. Make sure you take a picture of what you did and send it to me so that I can see everything you're doing at home. All right, let's meet my science sidekick. This is, the, this is my sidekick that was helping me today. This is Jordan, the judge. Everyone say hi, Jordan.
Hi everybody! Woo! Woo! Thank you for being my science sidekick. You did such a good job. Thank you for your predictions and for helping me with my experiments today. And we hope we get to see you next time, Jordan. Hi, Jordan! You're Jordan. <laughs> All right, Jordan. It's okay. Are you a little confused? <laughs> oh, you know what? I think you're, you might be a little mixed up, like our mixed up chameleon. It's okay. But you know what? Just be yourself. All right, everyone. Bye, everybody. Next week, we're doing a water project for second grade. Make sure you tune in. Bye.